Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you very much for being with us once again in this series of videos entitled Gita for Everyone. Today we will be analyzing chapter 4, Transcendental Knowledge. It's relatively a very simple chapter. One of the reasons is because the title in itself gives, gives away what's the topic, knowledge. Now the question is, knowledge about what? Let's remember that in the previous chapter, chapter 3, Krishna is telling Arjuna about his duty, his occupation, his spiritual job. But before that, let's backpedal and let's remember that the topic for the whole section, chapter 1 to 6, the first section of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, refers to us. What do we need to know? What do we need to learn in order for us to achieve perfection? And the example that we gave is, as Srila Prabhupada mentions, uh, when somebody loses his identity, loses his memory, the amnesia. Huh? So in this particular chapter, Krishna will remind us uh, what do we need to know? What do we need to know in order for us to execute the work that he was recommending in chapter 3? Now this chapter has many interesting uh, characteristics. One of them is that for the first time Krishna is explaining more in detail about himself. Why does he do that? It's just like if a teacher comes into a classroom and then he gives his credentials. I have taught in this university, I have taught in that institute, I have been the teacher of such and such. So he's presenting his credentials. So the history of Bhagavad Gita is thus given in the first few verses. This is to establish Krishna's supremacy as a teacher of the Bhagavad Gita. And he gets into the details saying to whom he has taught. He taught this to the sun god Vivashwan, then to Manu, the father of mankind, and to great saintly kings of the past. Now Arjuna, the only question, by the way, the only question that we find uh, from Arjuna in this chapter is when he asks Krishna, how, how come could you taught Bhagavad Gita to Vivashwan when he's senior to you by birth? And Krishna explains that the nature of his appearance, the nature of his identity, his supreme, uh, the supreme Lord, of, of, of everything. So we find that the first section is introducing the history of Bhagavad Gita, the nature of Krishna as a Supreme Person, and then he's describing the characteristics of the type of work that he had recommended in the previous verses. So he mentions here several things. He mentions uh, sacrifice or work for demigods, sacrifice in the social system called Varnashram, but more importantly, he explains what's the characteristics of this work or karma yoga that he's referring to in chapter 3. And this is uh, what contains most of Srila Prabhupada's teachings or explanations in the purport. What is devotional service? In this chapter, um, Srila Prabhupada says, Buddha yoga Karma Yoga all refer to the same point, devotional service to Krishna. So what does this mean? First of all, we have to understand that when we work for Krishna, we cannot have selfish motivations. That's the way by which one can get purified from all previous reactions. That's the essence of the chapter, how to work for Krishna, how to perform sacrifice for Vishnu, as he referred to in chapter 3. So. For us to understand in a simple way this chapter, let's continue the format of the previous analysis of the chapters of the Gita. First of all, how the chapter begins. We refer that Krishna started telling the story of the Bhagavad Gita and then the nature of his position as the Supreme. It's not a long verse, a long chapter. It has only 42 verses. And it ends um, just like Krishna in the previous chapter, he recommended Arjuna to destroy uh, the enemy of the living entity defined as lust. In this chapter, we have a similarity. He identifies doubt for the living entity as the main problem to perform devotional service. So he recommends at the end of the chapter to destroy these uh, doubts uh, armed with a sword of knowledge. The main topic, as we mentioned earlier, is knowledge. And the different sections explain everything about sacrifice. How can we act for the pleasure of Krishna? So we have sacrifices in different modes. 
we have different motivations, different types of performers of sacrifice, brahmacharis, jnanis, yogis, and different people who have, are performing the same type of sacrifice will be mentioned by Krishna. But essentially, he's referring to this aspect of wanting to do some work, a specific work, maybe different types of work, but the same concept of sacrifice. Now, the connection is quite clear with the previous chapter. The previous chapter is called Karma Yoga, and Prabhupada explains that in this particular chapter, Buddhi Yoga will be explained. Buddhi Yoga means acting with knowledge, working with knowledge. That's what's the reference. So that's the clear connection, how to work um, with knowledge, how to apply chapter 3, which is referring to work, how to work with knowledge for Krishna. The connection with the um, next chapter is very, very interesting. Why? Because Krishna, as I said earlier, has a particular type of uh, a style in how to perform this work. So he has a style in teaching. Um, he mentions sometimes something in a very brief way, and then he dedicates long sections or long um, uh, chapters to explain that particular topic. For example, he's mentioning briefly about his nature, but then he, in great detail, in further chapters, he will explain about his position as the Supreme Lord. So the connection with the next chapter, chapter 5, called Karma Yoga, or Action in Krishna Consciousness, is that here in this chapter, towards the end, Lord Krishna will explain the characteristics of such work. Um, you will see what are the results of those who work in Krishna Consciousness. Now, chapter 5, it's entirely dedicated to explain what is the result of applying chapter 2, 3, and 4. Let's go back to our example, the amnesia. In chapter 1, due to the amnesia of Arjuna, he's lamenting. In chapter 2, he's being reminded of his identity. In chapter 3, he's indicated um, of what his work is, what his duty, what his job is. And in this chapter, He's uh, um, instructed of how he needs to work, what sort of knowledge he needs in order to perform devotional service. Now, obviously, it has a very uh, close connotation in our daily life because we all work, we all perform some kind of work. So we need to understand um, how to work for Krishna. How, what are those motivations that we have to simply please the Supreme Lord? So in this way, we can see that it's a very simple but very interesting chapter because it gives us the essential points for how to perform devotional service. Now, Krishna mentions a few other interesting things. For example, he refers to this sacrifice as recommended by the Vedas. He also recommends uh, to follow the footsteps of the previous students, Bhivashwan and the Vedic sages, the great kings, etc. So in this way, Krishna is giving um, 42 verses, mostly of his talking, except from one um, verse that Arjuna presents as a question when he's a little confused. How come you taught this to Vivashwan when he's senior than you? So Krishna is recommending in full to take the transcendental knowledge coming from the Vedas, apply from previous Vedic students, and he recommends Arjuna to follow in their example. So in this way, we have analyzed in a very simple way chapter 4. So we thank you very much for your time and we hope that you join us next week with chapter 5. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.